Hello everyone, Snoggerts here. So I'm back here with another 11 point video. Now, I have received a lot of requests from the comment section regarding how I got everything set up and what hardware you need and a bunch of other specifics. So I decided to make this video to generally answer those questions and give you guidance so that if you want to do 11 point one day, you can totally do it. <laughs> when it comes to 11 point, there's nothing more important than the hardware. So I'll go ahead and start with that first. So in order to do 11 point tracking, you're going to need either 8 of the Vi trackers or 8 of the Tundras. Now unfortunately, I cannot say anything about the Heridorax or the Slime VR as I never really had any experience with them. But in order to give the most accurate information possible, I'm going to stick with what I had personal experiences with. I will say that one of the biggest things that people ask me in the comment section is if you can mix and match 3.0 and 2.0 trackers. And the fact is, yes, you can. You can mix and match by 3.0 and 2.0 trackers just fine. In fact, you can even mix in Tundras if you want. As long as everything is integrated in SteamVR, you should be all good. <laughs> it, it should work just fine. I definitely had experiences with mixing them before, so I could definitely tell you from personal experience that they will work just fine. Definitely an aspect I would like to talk about when it comes to 11 point is that if you're going to have 8 of the vibes or the tundras, you will have a lot of dongles to work with. And having 8 of the USB slots on your motherboard being used will overload your motherboard's USB controller. And if there's something you want to do to avoid that, definitely get a USB PCI Express expansion card so that you have some more USB ports to work with. Not only that, but those kinds of cards actually come with their own USB controller so that you can separate the load between them so that it doesn't overload it. Now, usually they go for like 20, 25 bucks. They're really not that bad. Usually they take a 1x lane, so it's a highly likely that your motherboard will support it. I will highly recommend getting one of them. In fact, I feel like it's a requirement at this point because you don't want to be that one guy that just chills with their friends, they're vibing, and then suddenly your knee is flying across the screen and then you're embarrassed. So in, in that case, please go ahead and invest in one of them. It will definitely help you out. And having some more USB ports is great. I mean, who doesn't want more USB ports? I do. <laughs> don't think of that the wrong way, please. The second thing you will need is base stations. Now, of course, if you're going into 11 point, I'm pretty sure you're already going to have some base stations, but in case you don't, you're going to need at least two base station 2.0s. And the reason why I recommend the 2.0s is the fact that they have a wider field of view and they have much more support for much more recent trackers, like the Vive 3.0 trackers, for instance. You cannot use Vive 3.0 trackers with 1.0 base stations. They just won't work together. The firmware is not designed for it. So definitely go get the 2.0 base stations. I will say that make sure if you're gonna buy those, be sure to buy them from Valve. The reason being is the fact that the ACC version of the base stations is pretty much shit. Not only are they gonna upcharge you 50 bucks more, but they're also gonna give you a shittier cable, and it also doesn't come with a wall mount. So please save your money, go ahead and buy the one from Valve, they come with a better cable, they come with a wall mount, and they're even cheaper, so you're basically losing nothing at this point. So go ahead and grab those from Valve, please make sure that they're the Valve versions because I find the HTC version is so bad, I mean it works, but it's just really an insult at this point that they provide worse stuff and charge you more. It just makes no sense to me. One of the most important aspects I would like to mention before I go into the track straps is the fact that there is a difference in tracking quality between the base station base trackers and the base station less trackers. So in this case, I would like to indicate SlimeVR as an example. The role of the base stations is actually to dictate the location of the tracker, and then that tracker sends that location data back to your PC. They both work together to create a real-time location, which is the result that you see in-game, as you can see. But the thing is with Slime VR is the fact that it actually has to do both of those jobs at once since it, since it does not require a base station. So not only does it have to figure out where it is, but it also has to send the location data back to your PC, which results in its high latency. Now, I'm not saying that Slime VR is bad or that it's terrible. I think that it's a great affordable option, but I felt like that was something I need to mention if you're choosing between a Slime VR setup compared to a Vitracker setup. Now, the difference is not 
huge, but it definitely is something you will 100% notice. And I don't know why people say how like the tracking quality is very similar to the slime VRs and I will tell them even from a technical aspect, it is not. I'll go ahead and start getting into straps. So for 11 point tracking, you're going to need some straps for your body. So you're going to need some for your feet, your knees, your waist, your chest, and your elbows. You're going to need eight to be exact. If there's any brand I would recommend, I mean, I've tried so many of them. I, mean, I tried Skywind VR, Rebuff Reality, VR Chat XEOZ and Kiwi, and I will tell you that if there's one I would recommend the most, it would definitely be the VR Chat XEOZ straps. They are by far the best straps I have ever used. They are so comfy, but unfortunately, they are much more on the pricey side. So, if I would give you a much more cost effective solution, I would say totally go for the knee and the foot straps. I do find that those are the best in the market. And I also personally feel that they're the only ones that actually have proper knee straps at the moment. So you kind of have no options there when it comes to the knee straps. So go ahead and get them. It will be worth the price, I promise. For everything else, you can totally go for the Rebuff Reality ones or the Kiwis. It will work just fine. The feet straps that come with the Rebuff Reality ones will also work for your arms. I'm actually using them right now since uh, the arm straps for EOZ were sold out. So they're pretty great. They're pretty comfy as long as you don't put them too tight. <laughs> I do have a video I recorded for some more context, so I'm going to cut into that real quick. Alrighty, this will be the great opportunity to show you my straps I use for 11 point. So most of these are actually going to be the VRChat X EOZ straps. They are a little pricey, but they are definitely worth the cost. They are the best straps I've ever worn. They're like so comfortable. And the foot straps, it's really great because it wraps around your foot, but this little strap here wraps around your heel, which keeps it in place much better than anything like the rebuff reality ones would just wrap around your heel or your foot and then that's it that's all, all the support it gets but um yeah so these are some of the eoc straps this is the one for the knee these are for the foot and this is for the waist i do find that if you want to get some proper knee straps get these i know they're a little pricey but they are the only proper ones in the market right now until something else comes up later around these are the rebuff reality ones i would rec generally recommend getting the rebuff reality ones because they're super comfortable and they're definitely less expensive than like if you're gonna get the VOZ straps. But the biggest thing I wanna say about the, the Rebuff Reality ones is the fact that the Velcro can definitely be prone to being teared. As you can see right here, after long-term use, the Velcro right here was getting teared when I was using it and uh, it just teared off very easily. I don't know if it was a defect or the fact that the Velcro wasn't strong, but it's just something to note if you're gonna buy the Rebuff Reality ones. But, um, yes. So, um, let me go into depth real quick about the setup here. So, these are my straps and these are all my trackers. So, I have eight of the Vibe 3.0 trackers. This is how it tracks every single part of my body, like my feet, my waist, my knees. But we also have the four base stations. So, I have one over there, one over here, I have one over there, and I have one over here. So, I have them on each opposite corner. That gives me full coverage of the room. And it's really convenient for me, especially with all these trackers, so that I can basically do any position I want and I won't have to lose any tracking. Now, of course, you can get away with just having two of these. You don't really need to have four of them. I just prefer to have the largest amount of coverage possible. So I decided to get four of them. Two of them actually came with my Valve Index. So I just actually just, just needed to buy two more of them. Now, depending on what headset you have, it might, it might or might not come with base stations. So definitely keep that in mind if you're gonna go to 11 point. I'll go ahead and start with the positioning of the trackers. So what I like to do is I like to keep my feet trackers at a 45 degree angle. I find that that gives me the best results and it really helps with the tracking since I like to do some extraneous positions on this channel. <laughs> I think you've seen them already but <laughs> um, I also like to keep my knee straps above my knee as I do find them to be much easier to wrap around my leg. And I like when I'm like, let's say if I want to get on my knees, I can do that without crushing my trackers. So that's the way I like to do it. And as for my elbows, I like to keep them slightly above my elbow and I like to keep them at a 90 degree angle away from it. I'll hopefully the pictures help you kind of visually give you an example of what I mean. 
I definitely think that the VRChat X EOC picture gives a great example of how I have my entire straps on my body. So definitely take a look into that a little bit more. But um, that's pretty much it for all the uh, trackers positioning. I don't think uh, there's really anything else I could really say about it other than the fact that please wear some pretty thick clothing so that it doesn't slip out every now and then when you're trying to walk around. So wear some thick pants, some thick, thick uh, t-shirts or whatever so that it doesn't fly around. And be sure not to put them too tight. And that's all I can say. <laughs> That's pretty much everything you need to know on how to set up 11 point tracking. It's actually not that bad when you think about it. It's pretty much very similar to setting up full body in general. You just have a lot more vibe trackers to work with and you need a couple USB ports in order to get everything working. But as long as you update your drivers, you update Steam VR, and you have everything in check, everything should work just fine. Now, one of the biggest things that people ask me in the comment section is how do I charge everything? So in order to charge everything, I would recommend getting a 10 port USB charger. What I like to do is I like to get a 10 port USB charger and I like to buy 10 USB-C cables to connect to my two Valve Imex controllers and 8 of my Vive V.0 trackers. They charge pretty fast due to the fact that it's USB-C and they take about maybe an hour and a half to charge from zero, I think so, yeah, around that time. So definitely have that lying around if you want to charge things more effectively because connecting all of them definitely is a tedious task. So having it sitting around ready to go when you need to plug in your trackers and your controllers when you're done for the day would definitely be a convenience. That's pretty much everything you guys need to know about 11 point. So if you have any more questions, please leave them down in the comments section. Thank you so much for watching. I really hope that this video was helpful for you. <laughs> Definitely took me a bit to make sure everything I said was correct. But other than that, I really hope that this video was helpful for you. I definitely want to make some more 11 point videos. You guys really seem to be digging them quite a lot, especially that last one. I had a lot of fun doing that last one, but it definitely took a lot of work due to the amount of avatars I had to do. <laughs> it was very interesting though. I learned a lot about the avatars when I uh, started doing that video. So definitely an experience, mind you. But um, thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day. Hopefully I can continue to make content much more often. I was thinking of, you know, maybe becoming a VR chain content creator since you guys really seem to like me a lot I guess so I'll go ahead and continue to make some more content you guys have a great day and I'll see you later